Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, my constant friend is he. His eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I see because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free, and I know. His eye is on the sparrow. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. For his eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. Well, I'm the Diane Watson they've all been talking about and writing about in the newspapers. Uh, I happened to have been at my family reunion uh, last week, and I got a call from the LA Times and uh, about Willis passing in CNN. And then the telephone started ringing. As a result, we got this. <laughs> now, could they have put any bigger picture in the paper of us? Then there's a picture of two other very wonderful, wonderful friends of Willis, Beverly Todd and uh, Judy Pace. Uh, yeah, he had his angels. He had us run kind of in a tribe. <laughs> and uh, when he ran for the community college but I'm going to go real quickly, because I'm speaking tomorrow. Uh, I could keep you entertained with Willis Edwards' stories all night long. But anyway, he ran against, against Gwen Moore, and she won the seat. And so, you know, they were rather distant. I was going to the Democratic Convention with uh, with, well, Willis decided he was going to come, but with Gwen. <laughs> he had a hotel room. So Willis calls and says, I don't have a place to stay. I said, all right, Willis, you can come and sleep on the floor. Well, Willis didn't come. We went to get our credentials, and Willis was standing behind the counter. <laughs> did not have a place to stay, was staying in the main hotel, was in charge of credentials. And so anyway, he says, listen, you are going to be with uh, Miss Kennedy and uh, Ethel Kennedy. So I go in dutifully and I give him my name and the young lady is looking and she can't find me with Ethel Kennedy. The <laughs> supervisor comes by and he says, can I help you? And uh, she said, yes, this is Senator Watson and she's supposed to be with Ethel Kennedy. Oh, no, no, she's in Jackie Kennedy's box. <laughs> so I go up to the box on the sixth floor and I'm sitting with Jackie Kennedy, Ewell Brenner, oh. Ethel Kennedy, Lauren McCall. And you know, my gosh, who am I in this crowd of thousands of notables? So he tells me, uh, go to the fifth floor. And uh, I learned at that point, you don't ask why, whatever. You just go. And I knocked on the door and I said, um, I might have been on the school board then. I'm board member Diane Watson. You know, they slid back this little panel. Well, they didn't let me in. I knocked again. 
I said, Willis Edwards sent me. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Clinton's mother. Oh. Then I go back to my seat and Lewis says, come with me. At this point, I'm really not asking. And he had uh, some people and he's walking back on the floor. You know, they're very tight with security at our conventions. And you don't get on that floor unless you're really a VIP. And I didn't know how to act like one at that time. <laughs> I followed Willis, and I've been following Willis for 40 years. <laughs> At the back of the stage, Willis tells me to go up these steps, and he took me to the front row of the podium. Uh, it was Kenny Hahn who was chairing that convention and sent me right next to Kenny Hahn. And I want to say this. Willis came into my life when he was student body president of Cal State LA. And he's been promoting Diane Watson every since. <laughs> Directly to the Senate as the first black woman because of Willis. He was always in my headquarters. And from the Senate, I became a U.S. ambassador because I got introduced to President Clinton, and we became good friends. Wow. Willis. And then I left there, and I came back, and I took Julian Dixon's seat in Congress. And I tell you, every step of the way, my buddy, my mentor, my friend, my coach, all these words, there was Willis. Good evening. Um, my name is Jim Chitty. Uh, Willis Edwards and I were very, very dear friends. You know, Willis was the only brother that I knew who was still using the Underground Railroad. <laughs> Hello, Jim Chitty. Uh, what happens here? Uh, uh, Jackie Hawthorne's going to pick me up and take me over to a meeting on 48th Street, and uh, Joy's going to pick me up at uh, so-and-so, and you... <laughs> Well, by the time it was my turn, and by the time I was finished taking Willis to three or four or five stops, it was usually midnight. Most people shop for their clothes downtown or a shopping center. Willis shopped at my house. When I joined the Beverly Hills Hollywood NAACP in 1988, having just graduated from college, Willis appointed me to the executive board and told me I was the youngest person ever appointed to the executive board of the Beverly Hills Hollywood NAACP. I said, Willis, what are my responsibilities? He said, well, there are many. My first responsibility was driving Willis to the ABC Employees Retreat in Palm Springs, California. Where Roland McFarland worked at ABC Entertainment. I said, Willis, what is this? He said, just drive. Uh, I just want to reflect on uh, my friendship. Uh, we go back to the 70s, too. I was at SC before uh, Sandra, of course. And I came from Detroit and I got re recruited on a poster that had a red, white, and blue fist. And it was talking about black power at USC. I said, well, I don't want to go to UCLA. I don't want to go to USC. <laughs> Neither did I know when I got to USC where I was going to find that it was kind of the opposite of what was on that poster. But who I met was Willis Evans. And as a result of meeting Willis, I became his work-study student. So I worked for Willis for about three years uh, with all my work-study money that I would have. And we, had, we coordinated all these speakers from all over the country. I mean, I remember picking up uh, people like um, um, Julia Bond and his wife when they came in to speak, and, and she was a speaker. Um, 
I'm, I'm missing the name now of the poet, uh, the, uh, Nikki Giovanni, that I had to pick up at the airport in my old beat up, they called it the Green Machine. And when I asked Nikki if she wanted to go to the hotel that we had made reservations for her, she said, who's paying for that? And I said, well, that's going to come out of your budget. She said, no, where are you going? I said, I'm going home to change. She said, I'm going with you. <laughs> I've had no political am ambitions of my own, but uh, in, in hanging out with Willis, uh, I've, I've been behind some closed door meetings that um, a lot of people came to imagine. I remember one with uh, Al Gore when he was running for president, uh, closed door meeting with all the black leaders in, uh, in Century City, uh, just going all over the country with him. I met Ron Brown through, uh, uh, former Commerce Secretary Ron Brown through Willis. And sitting down having breakfast with uh, Maxine Waters and Alice Huffman and just listening to all these brilliant uh, political minds talk about strategies and demographics and it's just been a, 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 a wonderful ride. If I were to mention the name Tootie Boy or Tootie Papa, <laughs> some of y'all wouldn't know what I was talking about because we're going back to like 1953. <laughs> You didn't know how old I was, huh? <laughs> I just look young. <laughs> I remember uh, at the age of eight when I was sitting uh, on a curbside and watching the Palm Springs High School marching band pass by with Tootie Boy, with Tootie Papa, <laughs> Willis Edwards, the drum major leading out front. <laughs> Spread and proud. And boy, let me tell you, I said, man, I know what I want to do for the rest of my life.